Vitamin D3 has become a very popular vitamin. It's been in the news a lot. And last year it was in the news for reducing inflammation and boosting our immune system. So why is it in the news again? Well, Vicki, we're learning a little bit more about the mechanism that's involved with how vitamin D does that. We know it's a very powerful anti-inflammatory agent if it's used properly. And sometimes in diseases, you know, we're looking at things like asthma, uh, arthritis, and cancer. There's Diabetes so much, too, I guess. Almost any, almost every, in fact, all the chronic diseases are associated with a lot of inflammation. And when levels of vitamin D are really low, we find that in, inflammation goes up. If they're lower than, they should, than the lower limit of normal, we have a real problem. And if we increase them to normal levels, we really get effects that are quite impressive when it comes to reducing inflammation. And when levels are taken to high levels, uh, sometimes we see some real medical effects from it that can be impressive. One of the things that happens with high dose vitamin D is that we shift the immune system's ability to make antibodies. And there are two ways that the immune system works to give us defenses. One is to make antibodies, which are involved in autoimmune reactions, and the other is to have cells that do the work of the immune system. And what it does, what they do, is they go after viruses and cancer and other kinds of, of situations uh, where they are destructive to it, which is what we want. So if we use high dose vitamin D, we can shift from antibody production, which is associated with a lot of the chronic diseases, particularly the ones that are autoimmune, back to cellular immunity, which is much safer. Doesn't it also affect the DNA and the genes? Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, DNA is something uh, that obviously modifies uh, and directs a lot of what our biochemistry is like. And we have a, a vitamin D present in normal amounts. It causes that vitamin D to produce what it should and, and to give us the kind of proteins and substances in our body that are making up cell metabolism, keep our cells healthy. When vit vitamin D levels are low, uh, our cells tend not to be able to do what's called differentiate, which means move into a direction where they're doing what they're supposed to do, as opposed to maybe moving more towards cancer. So besides just helping with autoimmune disease and helping with our bones, mm -hmm. it also helps with other things like a heart attack and a stroke and asthma, as well as the arthritis and diabetes and cancer that, that uh, we mentioned. Indeed. And there were some studies that were done that were published in the Journal of Immunology in February of, of 2011, it was some time ago, uh, that showed <clears throat> that when you incubate cells with endotoxin, which is what bacteria make, that makes us get pretty sick and there's a lot of inflammation, if we don't have any vitamin D, what happens is we have high levels of cytokines, which are biochemical messengers that go from our immune system to our bloodstream that go up very high. And the two in particular that are involved are interleukin-6 and TNF-alpha. So for those of you that, that know something about the biochemistry of inflammation, that's a big breakthrough. You know, another thing it helps with is viruses. Absolutely. I mean, th those when you shift fr from the immune system making antibodies to making cells that fight uh, cancer and viruses, you've done something that, that really does a lot. So I think what you're getting at is when you, if you're worried about getting the bird flu or the swine flu or some other kind of influenza, maybe that's a much better way to try and deal with it than to take the vaccines, which of course are a disaster. And if you want to learn more about that, I would suggest you put the infection deception in the search box on our website, drsabuda.com, and a lot of interesting data will come up that's published in the Townsend letter that, I, that I've written. And also, don't be afraid to get out in the sun. Indeed. What a good way to get your vitamin D. You know, we talk about trying to correct low levels of vitamin D, and we're trying to do something that's unnatural, and we, we rely on supplements. Because supplements of vitamin D don't exactly grow on trees or plants. They're in some of the food that we eat, but the bulk of it is made from sunlight. And so during the, the months uh, of the year when the sun is out, we should try and get at least 20 minutes of direct sunlight on, the, on most of our skin between the hours of 10 and 2 because that's when the UVB rays are out there and will help us to make vitamin D. And that doesn't, doesn't mean putting sunscreen on your body. Exactly. For, those, for that amount of time. Right. So in the wintertime, you know, our vitamin D supplies within three or four months are largely gone. 
And if our levels drop to very low levels, that kind of explains why we're susceptible to getting virus infections that uh, are running rampant at that so time. So that of might the year. be a good time of year to take a trip. <laughs> take a trip. Hawaii or... <laughs> or take your vitamin D supplement. So it's good to know that we're knowing more about what vitamin D does and how it inhibits inflammation. And of course, we should all have our vitamin D levels measured so that we know exactly what they are and won't have to worry about having ourselves be susceptible to so many chronic diseases. 